All right, we're here. So sorry if the audio is a little bit echoey. I will do my best to mitigate that in editing, but it's only for a week. This is another temporary location and I will explain everything on my community tab once I get to my next location of what's going on in my life and such. So I tend to review basically just mainstream movies on this channel when I do reviews. Uh, and that's for two main reasons. One is that, hey, I hate to say it, these are the videos that do the best view wise. And that's not something that's lost on me when considering topics to talk about. And two, they are just the most easily accessible and considering that I've been traveling an awful lot in the past year, sometimes there's not an, a theater that's showing indie films near me. So I don't really have as much access, but Today, we are going to be delving into the world of indie film. I made a post on the community tab a couple of months ago and an overwhelming majority of you said, yes, we would like to see indie reviews from you. And we're finally really, really getting into award season now specifically. So I watched a film today or yesterday, today, yeah, uh, called After Sun which is a film that's been getting a lot of recognition coming out of Cannes, coming out of TIFF, lots of people's favorite movies of the years, directed by Charlotte Wells in her directorial debut. And I will have to say, you can consider me a part of the hype train because I very much loved After Sun. There are a lot of aspects to gush over with this film, but the first that I want to focus on specifically is the pacing of After Sun. The pacing of this film is so well done in a completely different stratosphere than most films. Every scene, you're given a little bit more knowledge of the situation at hand, and it keeps ratcheting up and you never get too much. You always get just enough to keep you intrigued and invested and slowly ramp up the discomfort of the situation at hand uh, without spoiling anything, of course. And it's, I've never really seen a film do it like this, giving away basically no information. It's a, amazing to see. I was enthralled the entire time watching this relationship between a daughter and a father slowly get to a different point than it was initially uh interspersed between like handy cam footage and and real life and you kind of don't exactly know if there's some imaginary sequences in there it's it's so well methodically and meticulously plotted out by charlotte wells who is one of the stars of this film there's very rarely, unless we're talking about an auteur where we know what their style is, a, a film that I see where you can tell this is the filmmaker speaking through the movie that they're putting out. And to do that in a debut feature is incredibly impressive. One of the more impressive feats that I've ever seen, frankly. There's so much of Charlotte, after watching uh, interviews with her, after completing my viewing of the film there are there's so much of her in this and sure one could hypothetically argue hey the reason why you can see so much of this director in the film is because she is pulling from her memory bank in order to make this film and that's true but there's such a unique vision being presented here in the way that things are shot, in the way that things are edited, in the way that dialogue is written and delivered. I can't help but think that it is the director's vision directly coming through. So I have to commend Charlotte Wells for making this film what it is and delivering one of the best debut features that I've seen in an incredibly long time. I briefly mentioned this while going on that tangent, but I do have to commend specifically the editing of the film. Shout out to Blair McClendon, who I think personally is making a name in the industry. He also did Wells' short film before this called Labs. But the other big 
mainstream kind of release that he did was The Assistant. And there's literally a video essay from Spikima Movies, one of my favorite video essays on the platform about the haunting sound design of The Assistant. So I, and I agree with that. I think that The Assistant is incredibly well edited, but specifically this after Sun, the transitions in this movie at certain points are nuts, crazy, insane, out of this world. I know I harp on transitions a lot in these reviews, but they really can make or break the flow of a movie. And when they're done this well, especially there's one edit at the end of the film that is insane, insane, crazy. Shout out to Blair McClendon for putting this movie together in the way that it was meant to be. Because that pacing that I was talking about is a lot Charlotte Wells, but also the editing has to be commended once again for being that great. There is also the elephant in the room that I have not talked about yet, and that is the performances from both Paul Mescal and Francesca Corio. Wow, 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 wow. Let's start with Paul Mescal. Honestly, probably Oscar nominated, deserving of that uh, for best leading actor. It's just magnificent to see a leading man portray such nuance, portray such softness, kindness in a father figure, but also just completely, you can tell, a haunted individual managing that broken spirited yet always giving character is something that it's, it's so hard to accomplish what Paul Mescal does in this film in navigating between always wanting to do the right thing, but then something in your life leading you the other way into a not great place. Uh, complex characters, especially in a film with such little dialogue and a very, very fair amount of physical acting, it's, it's so difficult to accomplish but he does it amazingly here. Wonderful performance. Moving on to Francesca Corio, the absolute bright shining star of this movie, no doubt whatsoever. Everyone always likes to harp on kid actors and she, again, one of the better kid actor performances that I've seen. I'm, I'm hesitant to say ever, but that's what it's really feeling like to me. Such a mindset of perfectly portrayed mindset of an 11 year old who is a product of any format of parent separation. You know what I mean? So, so well done. She deserves all of the recognition that she's going to be getting out of this, especially considering from what I could find, this is literally her first performance ever and you would never be able to tell. It seems like she's been acting her entire life or that's just who she re really is. And she put her soul in that role. Either way, it is superbly impressive. Wonderfully impressive. Uh, once again, probably deserves best actress in a leading role nomination at the Oscars, but I highly doubt either of these will get the recognition that they deserve on that front. Uh, but yeah, seeing the dynamic between the two is one of the most wonderful, magical dynamics that I've seen between a father and a daughter in a film, or basically a parent and a child in a film ever. Uh, just was blown away by the performances and after so. I hope you also don't mind me putting this in here because I do try to be pretty objective when it comes to these reviews, but it would be a miss for me not to note that this film did make me emotional. It is very hard to make me emotional in a film, but the subtle and understated silence of this film just really, really got to me. And, and considering that I do have ties from my personal life to this film, it really, really, really hit me in the chest, full force, uh, especially towards the end when you start to see things unravel more and more, you know? And it's not unraveling in the way where it's like a psych 
thriller that like oh every it's 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 getting out of control fast no it's that it's like private unraveling you know what i mean it's it's unraveling within it's internal raveling as as opposed to external which once again i think is a very hard thing to portray with such little dialogue again just charlotte wells knocked my socks off with after sun a wonderful product that deserves to be seen by everyone ultimately at the end of the day i am going to give after sun a nine out of ten when it comes to theaters near you if it's in limited release i know it's coming out in new york los angeles in a couple weeks i believe but if you have the chance to go see it in a theater please do go see it in the theater that is the way it should be seen. If you have a chance to catch it in the online screening or something like that, do that. Just watch it, please, I beg of you. It is my second best film of the year right after After Yang. So wonderful experience. And uh, I will probably, before the year is over, watch it again. Uh, it was that good. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a wonderful day. We got, I don't know when I'm uploading this, but Lyle Lyle Crocodile Amsterdam review coming sometime in the near future or just happened. Uh, and then maybe I will be talking about Halloween kills then uh, at some point. So yeah, super, super, super dope. Loved it. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you in the next one. Sorry, I'm just gushing over <laughs> after sun because of how much I adore it. All right, I will talk to you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>